go. My name's Tim. I'm a musician, a car collector, an automotive journalist, and a lover of all things automotive. I've bought and sold collectible cars for two decades, and I hope my experiences and my point of view helps you find the car of your dreams. On this episode, my daily driver of the last eight or nine months, the Mercedes S212 Estate E350 4Matic. Who says daily drivers need to be boring? Now for context here, the W211, which preceded this W212 or S212 Mercedes-Benz platform, was itself an evolution of the W210. I felt like the W210 was a clean break from the older body style. When they introduced the quad headlight design, that W210 really stood on its own. The 211 was sort of a more rounded, more aerodynamic, updated version, but wasn't a clean slate design in my opinion. With the W212 S212 Estate, and particularly with the Estate, I think they knocked it out of the park. I love the squared off Bauhaus design of this car. To this day, I'm not sure that any Estate car has gotten the elevating to the rear swag line design better nailed than this car. And styling wise, I love that fender hump that recalls the Ponton Mercedes era. And I love that from the very bottom of the front splitter on the bumper to the lower ascending detail line that finishes with the bumper, it just elevates to the rear of the car in such a tasteful way. It's the traditional shooting brake, but in the most beautiful sense. The S212 is beautifully laid out inside with gorgeous veneers, but I'll tell you this, Mercedes crushes you on the options. And this car isn't optioned super high. It's got a sport package, heated steering wheel, a few options, but even at that, it's beautiful. It still has dual zone climate control, wood veneers, shades on the back windows, heated seats, a pano roof. And I have to say, having driven this car with both a pano roof and a sunroof, the pano roof is what you want if you're gonna go for this car. It's a great place to spend time and it doesn't feel like you're making a concession to drive this car versus something else in your garage. You're gonna enjoy it. The reality is almost every car you buy these days is loaded with features, loaded with options. With Mercedes, it's a little more luxurious. It feels a little more solid, but let's get out on the road, take it for a drive, and I'll tell you what I really think. The Mercedes E350 wagon, the S212, is a fantastic daily driver. And I thought we'd start this episode off with me daily driving the car on my commute. Turns out I'm a complete zombie on the commute. So that didn't work out right. And I'm not sure if we can use any of that footage. The reality is this is a fantastic daily driver and one that's currently an exceptionally great deal on the used market. Upon acquiring this car, the one thing I'll say is that I noticed that it had the uh, paddles on the wheel. And I thought, hmm, that's kind of weird. Like. Uh, it's just a fairly sedate car, but really to drive the automatic transmission tuning on this car from default is a hundred percent grandpa. It assumes that you want to shift into the highest gear immediately. And no matter how breakneck you drive the car, it pretty much defaults to a pretty slovenly kind of shift. So they give you these paddles and honestly they work fantastic. Once you select a gear, I'm in fourth right now, we'll drop down to third. It's gonna hang on to third until I make a decision. And I, I really enjoy driving it on the paddles. And the car, while this engine isn't certainly the most powerful, it pulls smoothly. Here we hit 80. While it's not a weapons grade E63, 
it's certainly uh, with this seven speed transmission is adequate for for daily driver needs it's not that much slower than a reasonably quick V8 car from a previous generation. So like a regular A8 or a regular uh, S-Class. The S-Class clearly is quicker, but this is not like super slouch mode. It's still a reasonable car. And when you want to get down, this car is pretty squat from the factory. And so it's got a fairly low center of gravity and will hustle through corners again by daily driver large vehicle standards and i have to say that the only thing that could maybe lure me out of this car is the glc coupe thing i don't know if you've seen those they make the glc in a in a suv and a coupe and i don't know what it is about the coupe when the x6 came out with that coupe i hated it but for whatever reason i love that that glc even more than the GLE body style. I think that GLC is one of my favorite cars currently on sale, so that may lure me away from from this. But I have really enjoyed this car. I've taken it to New York, a couple other trips, uh, several over 100 mile uh, highway trips. The cruise is fantastic. The heated steering wheel is brilliant for mornings such as this, and so it's a it's a fantastic car it has that vault like feel that they left after the w124 I, I really missed that and this car has that sort of timeless feel and i feel like this 2011 to 2014 whatever this body style is is timeless in a way that the new one is not the new one feels I don't know, like the, the bulbous roundiness almost feels dated to me already. Like I can already see it on the used car lot. Yeah, while as this, with the sharpness and the separated uh, lights on the face, whatever it is about this generation, I just feel like it's, it's timeless. With Mercedes, some generations are more reliable than others. And even more than the W211 and S211, these cars have proven to be really reliable. Now there's a few things to be aware of. Uh, the seat that I'm going to show you right now, uh, the MB text looks brand new in this car, but there is a seam on each seat that can be problematic. And in fact, uh, if you look on the forums, they're pretty good about taking care of these. As far as other service items, I found just from looking, just from talking to friends and other people that have owned this car, that that power steering pumps are maybe a little bit underpowered for the car itself. Uh, in terms of other items, the engine uh, has proven to be one of the best. This seven speed transmission in this car, which is completely under stressed, uh, is really no worries um, type of unit. Again, eventually you'll wanna change the fluid on it. In terms of other things that can break on the car, since I've had the car, I occasionally get a uh, notice that my rear door is ajar, which I haven't gotten in a, in a few months, and I don't know, uh, but that's you know that's a potential thing. They do have rear air suspension, but it's a very simple rear air suspension setup, which is welcome after coming from uh, Land Rover world. The air suspension in this car is extremely straightforward. Uh, there is essentially a couple of bags and a compressor. A level switch and that's about it. They're very inexpensive to maintain. Uh, both the original equipment bags and the, uh, I believe Arnott is the company that makes the bags for the rear, uh, are very inexpensive uh, relative to other cars with air suspension. And uh, again, even on the forums, it doesn't really look like that's too much uh, of an issue with this car, even up to 150, 60,000 miles. The other thing that I would say about this car, it is extremely cosseting. Uh, it's almost S-Class nice. You know, I used a uh, uh, an S-Class as a daily driver, an S500, uh, which I did a video on for about a year. I think I had that car. And this car uh, feels very similar. It's extremely solid. Uh, they've gained some width over the uh, previous generation E-Class. And I'd say some solidity. Everything you touch is very nice. Everything you look at is very nice. The ambient lighting on the dash is beautiful. And so it, it's a very thoughtfully uh, produced car. I love this body style. I think after this, they kind of 
got roundy, and currently I'm not a huge fan of the E-Class. I think that that styling works really well on the CLS and the C-Class, but I don't love it on the current E-Class. Um, and so I, I liked this kind of ball house, uh, square, angular. I love the front lights on it. Um, you know, I liked this generation. And so, yeah, it's a great car. I'd say relative to that S-Class sort of analogy, uh, the fuel economy is not fantastic. If you look at the, this fuel economy versus like the highway economy for an E63 wagon or a uh, S-Class, it's, it's kind of similar. You know, I average about 20 on the highway, about 25 on a long trip out to New York. I got about 26, maybe 27 miles per gallon. But that was really, I mean, I wouldn't say hyper miling, but like very economical in terms of speed and throttle and that sort of thing it isn't going to be a car around town it gets about 18 19 maybe 20 miles per gallon so it's not a uh, a fantastic car in terms of fuel economy in the way some of the uh, bigger cars that have uh, two liters or really even v8s with uh with more torque to sort of get it up to speed uh so that's you know i'm not gonna nitpick but uh, i feel like it's one thing that audi does pretty well or VW or you know the other German competition even BMW I just feel like they're pretty good about getting great fuel economy now I will say the seven speed transmission is a honey and uh, allows the car to you know at uh, we're currently what are we uh, 75 miles per hour and it's just turning 2,000 a little over 2,000 rpms it's extremely quiet. It doesn't have double pane glass or any trickery like that, but it's a very quiet car. The highway ride is impeccable, and really that's what this car is all about. You do have the sort of uh, rear jump seats, which I wish I would have had this car when my kids were a little little younger. Now they're they're too big to really get in the back there, but uh, you know it does have in a pinch you can seat seven people, and I think it's an absolutely almost impossible to beat daily driver i don't know what else could possibly have this level of comfort and the sort of do anything with it uh, capacity that this car has this car at higher speeds is so stable it is uh you know when you're in germany you see a lot of these cars particularly the estates or the wagons uh and it's no wonder because it is just so good it's like the faster you go the better it is on the highway so from that standpoint a plus daily driver let's take a look at this nav which updates from satellite like what what foods coming up and what uh, what gas stations are coming up I mean that's so convenient so while it doesn't have Apple CarPlay it's still got you know the iPod adapter and everything else that you'd want and the heated steering wheel man if you get one of these get the heated steering wheel they don't play the heated seats are nowhere near as good as Audi, but the heated steering wheel is on point. Burn your fingers off. While it may be great to have a garage full of exotics and dream cars, the reality is sometimes you just need to take people places. Sometimes you need to go to the grocery store, and sometimes you need a daily driver, something to pile the miles on that still has a bit of class and a bit of style. When the topic is timeless estate car design, I think the S212 is the best looking estate car of the last decade. Early pre-facelift cars offer great reliability at a low price. These wagons are rare here in the US and long-term desirability should remain high. The E350 formatic and mental 518 horsepower E63 estates are brilliant daily drivers. Driving one will leave people in no doubt that even when it comes to your daily driver, you are a true enthusiast.